2023 was kind of a weird year for me. It was the first full year where I ran this YouTube channel as my only business. In the past, I was a partner in Generation Tech. Hey guys, Ben here from Generation Tech. If you've seen The Force Awakens, you may have wondered why C-3PO now has a red arm. And I ran the Credit Shifu as a side channel. Hey guys, Credit Shifu here. This is a video about how to climb the credit card ladder. I was also distracted for most of the year building my Airbnb cabin here in the Catskills Mountains, north of New York City, and that took a lot out of me and was actually a huge expense while bringing in no income whatsoever during construction. You would get out of the blue heart-stopping bills for like $70,000 and the builder wanted them paid before the bank had actually released the funds, so it was a lot of stress. The distraction also meant that I earned less from YouTube just because I didn't do as many videos. I did have a brief rest going to Hawaii at the end of the year, which was much appreciated, but then right at the beginning of 2024, both my cars got destroyed within the space of a month, which is one of the weirdest things that's ever happened to me. The first one was hit by a massive tree that fell down in a storm, and the second one was hit by a driver running a stop sign. Both were total losses. But we are now in quarter two of 2024. The cabin is rented out and bringing in monthly income. The insurance covered everything to do with the cars, and I bought a new car, and I'm able to go back to focus on YouTube again, and also on what my credit and financial strategy will be for the year ahead. So in this video, I'm gonna go through all of those things. What cards I'm using this year for maximum rewards. What card I'm using to pay my taxes this year to earn benefits worth at least $500, if not $1,000. How I'm paying down debt to accelerate wealth building and how I am protecting my assets. And this video is brought to you by Rocket Money, but more on that later. Part one, credit card strategy. So here is my credit card strategy for quarter two of 2024, and some of this will extend to the rest of the year too. So my biggest personal expenses right now, and I should say the expenses that can be put on a credit card, because obviously some things like school fees for my kids, mortgage payments, those can't be. But my biggest personal expenses are restaurants, gas, and groceries. Although I spend way less on groceries than I used to since I moved to a local YouTube networks building where I actually have lunch and dinner provided as part of my deal with them. We we then also have a load of non-category stuff that I'll be looking to probably get new cards for. But for restaurants, I am taking advantage of Chase Freedom's quarter two categories, one of which is restaurants. Now I have two Freedom cards. One is an old Freedom, but I'm grandfathered into, and that one will earn five points per dollar at restaurants this quarter. But then I recently product changed the other one, the other old Freedom I had, to the Freedom Flex, because the Flex earns three points per dollar on restaurants, and when you add the five points category, which actually only adds four points since you normally get one point from base spend, and then they add four to make five. But in this case, we have one point from base spend, two points from the regular restaurants bonus category, and then we are adding four with the 5% you know, quarterly category thing. So it's a total of seven points per dollar. So on a recent meal at the wonderful Ishan Korean restaurant in Middletown, New York, and if you guys are ever in town, actually you should check that one out by the way, but on a $145 meal, I earned over 1,000 chase points. If I max out the Freedom Flex before the end of the quarter, I may even product change the other Freedom too. If I max out both at 7X, that will be 21,000 chase points that I will earn for the quarter just on my restaurant spend with a minimum value after transferring to the ink preferred at 1.25 cents per point of $262. And that value goes up to potentially over $400 if I transfer them out to airlines and book premium cabins. Gas is another big expense for me. I do a lot of driving up to my cabin and I use the Wyndham Rewards Earn a Business Card for gas since it earns eight Wyndham points per dollar. But I use it through the Walmart Plus app at mobile gas stations to get an extra 10 cents off per gallon. Walmart Plus is a benefit that I get from the Amex Platinum. There's a mobile gas station up near my cabin that sets its prices really low since it's in the middle of nowhere. I guess they're trying to attract people to come and I can sometimes get gas even under $3 per gallon when the Walmart Plus discount is applied. You may also be wondering, since it's a business expense, yes, I am tracking my miles driven for business. I use an app called Driver's Note to do that so I can get a tax deduction for driving expenses at the end of the year. So far, I have 80 2,000 Wyndham points, which I'm not 
totally sure what I'm gonna do with. I know they do own some all-inclusive resorts and I am a Diamond member from having the card, so it could be a pretty good experience. Some people have recommended a resort in Clearwater, Florida. I also thought of maybe transferring the points to Caesars and going to Las Vegas. I'm not sure yet, but if anyone can recommend a good use for Wyndham points, do leave your comments down below. Then for the small amount of groceries that I do buy, I still use the Amex Gold for four Amex points per dollar. You can see here on my Rocket Money app that I spent just $111 on grocery this month, so way under my $500 grocery budget for the month. And yes, side note, you may be wondering why I spent $20,000 in April so far, which is obviously way over my budget, and that's because I paid my taxes in April, which we will be talking about next. Rocket Money does have a way, though, that you can set it to ignore big one-off purchases that are outside your normal budget. So I set that 7,000 or so to be ignored, and then there's another state tax payment of nearly 4,000 that I paid through plastic. We'll ignore that too, and look, we're now within our budget. And since I've already started talking about Rocket Money, the sponsor of today's video, I might as well keep going. So Rocket Money is an app that I started using last year when I was spending ridiculous amounts of money building my cabin and I needed to keep on top of my expenses. So I used it to set a budget and know where every cent of my money was going and I found it to be a game changer from a budgeting perspective. I can see what I'm spending in every category of spend because all my cards and my bank accounts are linked to the app. It'll give me alerts if I go over budget in any one category or overall. You can also find waste in your budget, like subscriptions that you forgot that you were paying for, and you can often cancel them with a couple of clicks right inside the app. Rocket Money have canceled over $500 million worth of unwanted subscriptions for their users. Another thing I really like is tracking my net worth with Rocket Money. I can see my assets like properties and stock checking and savings account balances, and also look at my assets minus debt and liabilities, which is true net worth. For properties, you can see how how much the mortgage has been paid off, so you can see how your equity is growing. And for those of you who used to use Mint.com before it was bought by Credit Karma and shut down and found the substitute that Credit Karma offered was not that good, Rocket Money is well worth considering for both budgeting and tracking your net worth. So take control of your finances today. Go to rocketmoney.com slash Ben and get started for free. All right, we mentioned taxes, so in a moment, let's take a look at how I am paying with a credit card this year to earn a load of rewards. But just lastly, for things like utilities that I spend quite a lot on now, running a short-term rental business, I use the Chase Income Limited for 1.5 Chase points per dollar on everything. That is the card I use for most of my business spending, apart from gas. But this year, I will probably be looking to get some new business cards, perhaps with specific categories like utilities or just something like the Amex Blue Business Plus that earns two Amex points per dollar on your first $50,000 in spend per year. I like to keep my business cards set up simple so I don't have to think about it too much. All right, let's move on. Part two, my tax strategy. All right, let's now talk about how I used my tax payments this year to earn a bonus. Last year, I owed $21,000 in federal taxes and about $9,000 in New York state taxes, and I used those payments to get the bonus on the Business Platinum and the Chase Income Limited. This year, I didn't actually apply for a new card. I wasn't in the mood. I just wanted to simplify my financial life after such a complex and draining situation last year, so I'm focusing on cards that I currently have. I actually used the Amex Hilton Honors Surpass card to pay my taxes this year. I ended up owing $7,193 in federal taxes. A lot less than last year because 2023 just wasn't a good year in terms of income. Although it is a little bit deceiving since tax on my first $48,000 worth of income is taken out automatically with the salary I pay myself each month, then I have noticed that the amount of tax you pay starts to go up really rapidly once you get higher in income. And I also have two kids which get me $2,000 tax credit each kid. And I'm married filing jointly, which raises my standard deduction and also raises all the tax brackets. And it's also self-employment income, which I get an extra 20% deduction for 
and we're also an S Corp, which gets you out of the social security part of it on all your income above your monthly salary. There's a lot of things going on, all right? So although I'm paying about 60% less in tax less year, I would actually say I only earned about 30% less in 2023 than I earned in 2022. So anyway, I paid over 7,000 in taxes to the IRS using the Amex Hilton Honor Surpass Card through pay1040.com, which is one of the IRS's three official payment processors, and that was for a fee of just under 2% or $134. I earned 21,000 points on the tax payment since the card earns three points per dollar on non-category spend. That almost completely wipes out the fee. Then I paid my state taxes on just under $4,000 through plastic because I had a load of fee-free dollars to use up. You may wonder why I didn't send my federal taxes through plastic, and that's because in 2020 when I did that, the check never arrived at the IRS. I had to get a refund and do it another way. So I've been kind of wary of plastic for federal taxes ever since. But anyway, that payment gets me 11,373 points, which is worth $67 in value. But the real point of making these purchases on the Hilton Honor Surpass card is because if you spend over $15,000 a year on the card, you get a Hilton Free Night Award. And these are some of the best hotel free nights out there since you can use them at any Hilton, even the really high-end ones. So when I go to DC this summer, which I probably do because I tend to go there at least once every summer, I may stay at the Waldorf Astoria, you know, the one that used to be the Trump Hotel, or the Conrad, which I've stayed at before and I really liked. Both can be booked with the Hilton free night certificate as long as you can find a standard room award which is currently showing up on the site and both would cost between $400 to $500 per night. I've also had $700 in value per night before out of the certificate staying at the Oceana Santa Monica. And the $11,000 worth of tax payments gets me much closer to that free night. You can see those charges have already been added to my total that counts towards the free night. And I only have $2,000 left to go to get that free night certificate. For a couple of days, I was a little bit worried that Amex wouldn't count it for some reason. I even chatted with a rep online who said that the tax payments probably would wouldn't count. But just so you know, Amex reps are pretty in the dark. They really just have access to the same set of terms and conditions that you can just view on the site publicly. So to be honest, they really don't know what they're talking about. But there is always a little bit of risk in doing this each year. But it seems a lot of the rumors about tax payments not counting for points, welcome bonuses, or free nights are not true. And most of the people who had issues in the past got their points in the end. So I'm glad that for another year, it hasn't been an issue and I will get my Hilton free night. The points I earned from my two tax payments completely cover the IRS fee. And so the free night is, well, free. All right, let's now move on to the next section of the video. Part three, paying down debt. Now, 2024 is the year that I discovered Dave Ramsey, and that was because of how financially stretched I was in 2023. It made me realize that I have to be careful about getting over leveraged. For the previous three years, I basically had no financial worries. But with the economy not doing so well now and the prices of things inflated, there's certainly more financial risk around. YouTube revenue directly from Google, so not the extra ads we do, but the revenue directly from YouTube, from the ads that play before a video, has come down quite a lot. It's down about 30% on my channel. The biggest lesson I have taken from Dave is to pay down your debts so that you can increase your monthly cash flow because you're not paying off debt, so it frees up more money. And that can then be used to invest. And if you need the money one month to cover an emergency, you could take a break from investing for a month or two. Now, I recently made a video on whether you should pay your mortgage off early or not. And although the math says no, you make more money investing that money and paying your mortgage as normal, financial security says you should. The whole idea is to have as little in the way of monthly payments as possible. Now for me, losing two cars reduced my monthly payments by $1,500. And I decided to just buy one car at $600 per month. So I've now freed up an extra $900 in cash flow. You could say it was a blessing in disguise. After feeling that increase in monthly cash, it inspired me to target other debts. So the next one I started looking at is an American Express personal loan that was originally 
annually for $25,000 and it's costing me $750 a month in payments. I took out this loan when I started to build my cabin because I'd used up all my available cash and I didn't want to sell stocks to fund the down payment on the build and I was about $25,000 short. I had about $11,000 left on the loan balance a couple of weeks ago, but after getting brainwashed by Dave Ramsey, brainwashed in a good way, I started throwing money at it outside of the normal payments. First, I paid a normal payment plus $1,000 extra, so $1,760. And then a few days ago, I threw another $1,000 at it, and it's now down to $8,200. I'm now looking at trying to get the whole thing paid off in two to three months, which combined with the $900 I saved on just having one car, it will be $1,660 in extra monthly cash flow freed up, which I could use to invest in stocks or index funds or pay down my mortgage early, which is what Dave Ramsey recommends. In reality, I will probably do both, paying a few hundred dollars in extra principal per month on my mortgage to hopefully pay it off in 20 years instead of 30, and then using the rest of the money to invest in stocks and enlarge my emergency fund, which got a bit depleted when I built the cabin. Then there is one financial move that I made this year, and that is part four, protecting my assets. Having both cars destroyed in accidents certainly highlighted the need for insurance. For the Jeep Wrangler, the insurance paid out $48,000. Then we had gap insurance on top of that, which covered the difference or the gap between the value of the car, which had depreciated since we'd bought it brand new, and the amount that we actually owed on it, which was around $60,000 or so. We were super lucky to have that. So always get gap insurance if you're buying a brand new car. With the other car, another driver was responsible, so their insurance paid the full value, and the car was actually worth more than we owed on it, so I ended up getting a check for around $2,000 after the bank was paid off. It made me feel like I'd escaped something that could have been really bad, leaving me owing over $10,000 had I not had the right insurance coverage. It made me take a look at my insurance situation across all my assets. I obviously have home and car insurance, and then I have insurance on my rental property that covers me for the full value of the house plus $70,000 in lost income should it get burned down or destroyed. And then $1 million worth of liability insurance should someone sue me for a slip and fall, for example. But I decided to go the extra mile and buy an umbrella insurance policy you can stand under my umbrella. to give me another million dollars worth of liability to cover me so that people cannot attack my other assets when I've exhausted my coverage on one of them. For example, someone who slips and falls at my rental property sues me for more than my rental property insurance covers. Under normal circumstances, they can then come after other assets like my main house or my car. But now there is another million dollars worth of coverage that would pay out before they could come after my house. Or if I caused an accident in my car, like a massive pile up on the highway, and the damage was more than my car insurance covered, then there is now another million dollars worth of coverage standing in the way before they could go after my rental property or my primary residence. Now, of course, the ideal way is to have your rental properties owned by an LLC with each rental property in its own LLC. But if you used a personal mortgage to buy the house to get a lower interest rate, then it's hard to move that into an LLC. So umbrella coverage is the way that works for me. Although once the loan on the rental property is completely paid off, I will move it into an LLC. Now my umbrella coverage costs me about $40 per month, and it's generally pretty cheap since it's only used when other insurance is completely used up, which is an extreme worst case scenario. With all these financial plans in place, the credit card rewards strategy, my Hilton free night through paying taxes, paying down debt, and really going hardcore on insurance coverage, I have a really good feeling about 2024. 2023 was a year of stretching myself to build a business, whereas 2024, for me at least, is the year of maximizing cash flow, paying down debts, and investing. Let me know what your financial or credit card plan is for 2024. I'd love to hear it. You can leave a comment down below. If you live in the New York tri-state area and want to stay at the cabin, I'll put a link to it in the description. Say you're a credit warrior and you get a 10% discount. And a big thank you to Rocket Money, the sponsor of today's video. It's an app that is key to the way I monitor my finances at the moment, and many of you in the audience would potentially benefit from using it too. Check it out in the links down below. Please subscribe if you're new, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.